Hello my lovelies and here is reversible reactions. Quite simple and they come up a lot though in like the Haber process, exothermic and endothermic reactions and equilibrium. So reversible reactions then, for the foundation here you just got to recognise that this is a symbol for a reversible reaction. And that means it goes in both directions. It means that this here, this ammonium chloride, will break down to ammonia and hydrochloric acid. And then these two, hydrochloric acid and ammonia, will join back together again and go back to ammonium chloride. So it keeps going backwards and forwards and backwards and forwards, which is why it's got an arrow this way and an arrow that way. Um, so you would expect it to know these words, reactants and products. So the reactant forms the products and then the products go back and form the reactants and it will go backwards and forwards in equilibria, which means that it go in the same rate, whoops, the same rate this way as it goes that way, if you left it. Uh, that only happens if you leave it in a closed system, which means that you are got it in a box. So we can't otherwise we'd lose all these gases, they'd float off into the air and nothing would happen at all. So closed system, reversible means goes forwards and backwards. Um, they might mention these words about exothermic and endothermic. It means that if you let the reaction go this way, okay, it would be exothermic. That means heat would exit it. It would get hot. It, we're trying to remember it, heat hating. And if you go that way, it loves heat. So that heat enters it, and we love heat. So if you've got look at this, fabulous. If I heated up this um, reaction here, heat it all up, it would go this way because this like loves heat. Now, if I go uh, down to this one, this is hydrated copper sulfate. They, this one comes up a lot. It's that blue stuff we all love in uh, science lessons. We love the blue stuff. So here, this is the powdered form, the solid form. So if hydro co hydrated copper sulfate, that's hydrated means with water, and you heat it up, then it goes to something called anhydrous copper sulfate, which means it's got no water, and water. Now, here, you'd have this sort of equipment. You'd have your Bunsen burner down here, heating up your... If I've got enough room. Yeah, heating up your hydrated copper sulphate. This would then go white. Let's see if I can make it go white. Come on. Right, this would then go white. Right, but you can't see it anymore, can you? <laughs> right, okay, white. And you would end up with some water in this test tube here. Now, if you added the water back to the white anhydrous copper sulfate, it would go blue. Just have to leave the heat out at that point. Uh, so you'd put that back in there, it would go blue again, because it would be reversible. Same way we've got heat hating and heat loving. So if I heat up the reaction, it goes towards the heat loving side, the endothermic. Enter, enter the heat, please. We can use this as a test for water because if we had anhydrous copper sulfate, this white uh, stuff here, and I added water and it went blue, then I could say, yes, it is water that I have added. Now for the higher tier, let's just take this a little bit more uh, further. Here, this is the Haber process. This is where I've got nitrogen gas and hydrogen gas. I react them together and I make ammonia, but uh, it goes backwards. That then decomposes and forms hydrogen and nitrogen. Now, the two sides, this is endothermic, so if it, I left it to go this way, it'd be endothermic. If I left it to go that way, it's exothermic. If I heat this, this reaction up then, it goes towards the endothermic way, the heat-loving way. So all this breaks down and I make loads of this, which is not so good if I'm trying to make ammonia. So if I heat loads, loads, loads of heat, it's a really quick reaction and I make lots of nitrogen and hydrogen, which is no good at all because I want it to go that way. So how could I make it go that way? I get rid of that and I cool the whole thing down. And because this hates heat, this one's happy as Larry, so the whole reaction goes that way. So this is how I can shift the equilibria. Shift it this way by cooling it right down, shift it that way by heating it up. I can also change which way a reaction goes by changing the pressure. Here is a, let's pretend it's a box, and I've shoved in my nitrogen and hydrogen, and they're reacting together to form ammonia. The ammonia is breaking down and forming hydrogen and nitrogen, and so on and so forth. If I increase the pressure, and I've done this here with a plunger, I can make it all turn into ammonia, well, most of it, get in the box, most of it into ammonia, because this takes up much less space. Two molecules of ammonia on this side, Whereas on this side, I've got four different molecules. So if I increase the pressure, it favours where there are less molecules.